We are all feeling low. Anxiety for Israel, fear of loss of support, the NPR. We see the soldiers injured. We see the rocks and the fire bombs. And we have great anxiety for Israel. Each one of us in our heart is anxious and worried. We also have great anxiety for Israel when we see beatings and the death of civilians. Because we worry, we feel it radicalizing the Arab population even more when they claim to have all and not just on those who are immediately doing it. What I want to say, first of all, when we feel these feelings, we should not be afraid. This is truly authentic. In Bracious Lamed Beis Ves, when Jacob faces Esau coming him, the Torah says, By you are Yaakov, and by Yitzhak, Jacob was afraid and distressed, say the rabbis. By you are afraid, Shema Yehorah, he was afraid lest he be killed. By Yitzhak, Shema Yehorah, Huachirah, he was distressed because he was afraid he would kill the others. To be a Jew is to live in the tension, not to look for simple solutions, but to recognize the truth that sometimes in history there is guilt, and part of our conscience and our realism is to feel that guilt too. Mayor Kahana likes to fold two position, three positions into two. There is the position of excessive paralytic guilt, self-defeating guilt, unjustified guilt that dumps on Israel, but there is the other pathology. There is no guilt. There is the claim that there is no guilt and no responsibility. The religious Jew, the deep Jew, who knows we have Yom Kippur every year for that reason, is that when you are in history and you're responsible, you do things that sometimes are painful and evil and mistaken because there are balance necessary. But if you remember that, you'll correct yourself. If you deny guilt, or if you treat the other's life as cheap, then you end up defeating what you are and you endanger your survival as well. Now what are we going to do about getting out of the present situation? The answer is, that in the past 20 years we have drifted because we thought there was no great cost in holding the West Bank. And more important, there was no Arab national leadership and no local Palestinian leadership that was ready to some way to merge and make peace with us. Indeed, Ariel Sharon had pushed for the rural, rural village improvement associations, and no one took it seriously. They were denounced as Uncle Tom's, and even Israel let them slide. Now, this West Bank Arab Palestinian action has shaken up the status quo. The cost will be much higher and something must be done. It also teaches us how reckless it is and continues to be to continually assault the Arabs within Israel as Mayor Kahan has been doing for the past 20 years. The truth is, the reason the West Bank is doing so well against us is that they are, they feel they have nothing to lose in Gaza. They feel that they are outraged together. The truth is the overwhelming loyalty, that's the word, and responsiveness of the Israeli Arabs has let Israel have a normal life for the last 20 years at so little cost. And if Mayor Kahana continues with provocations and threaten to kick them out, if they become convinced they are going to be kicked out, that you would have the same scenes inside Israel every day, making it impossible. There's not a big enough Israeli army to be patrolling all that way. So what is the alternative? The alternative is simply to stop drifting and to do something. This is a time to stand by Israel for American Jews. Its 40-year record is better than any nation in history. The reason the rock throwers are throwing the rocks is they know they're not facing an Arab army that will shoot them down like flies. We should be proud of that. Even the decision of feeding was a decision because they didn't want to go on having any deaths. That was what it was. And it was said wrong by Rabbi, and he encouraged soldiers to go too far, and that was wrong too. But on balance, it's a statement of Israel's own conflict and its own moral responsibility. And even those mistakes have been the limited mistakes of Israel. So should we criticize Israel the United States? The final secure decisions are Israel. It's easy to give advice from here. I honestly think that we should not criticize, or if we do, it depends how it's said. If it's made with unqualified support of Israel, if it's said privately, it is a lot more dignity and justice than the harsh and excessive language of both Rabbi Shimla and Rabbi Sigmund. But the fact remains that it is part of the Jewish commitment to each other that we struggle together. So what next? In Lebanon, we took heavy PR losses. We cut our losses, we got out of Lebanon, the public saw that the Arabs are still out to kill us, and American public opinion came right back, where they saw we cleaned up after Sabra Shatila, and we held our own leaders to the highest moral standard. We didn't even organize that, so they were held responsible for not blocking that massacre. Then American public opinion came out overwhelmingly on our side. We remembered the pogroms in the Shoah, and therefore we held ourselves to a higher standard. So if Israel now moves to negotiate, if it can stop the hotheads and the excessive beatings, 
if it can't stop the Bay of Kahanas and that kind of philosophy, then the Palestinians will have to come up with a peace plan. They will have to accept Israel. They will have to give up their Tel Aviv murderous fantasies. They'll have to allow Jews to live in the West Bank, and they will. And international opinion, whether or not that counts, the United States will stand by us, and we are strong enough to hold our own. If we resort to violence, if we turn radically right, if we lose our moral way now, we will have neither peace on the West Bank, nor internal peace in Israel, because the majority of the population will not support its coming the Arabs. Therefore, if we lose our way now, if we look for simplistic solutions, we will only shoot ourselves in the foot. This is a time not to panic or despair, but to renew our commitment to Israel and to the peace process. Sure. I feel not the slightest guilt for killing my enemy before he kills me. Slay him first. That, of course, Jacob felt fearful that he might kill his own brother. Yeah, it's not my brothers. <laughs> I do feel guilt. I feel guilt, not about Sabra Shatilin in Lebanon, but about the fact that when my son came back from the war in Lebanon as a soldier serving artillery, he told me that they had received orders that if PLO positions were placed within an Arab village, that they were not allowed to give fire cover to the Israeli infantry soldiers. Do you know how many Jewish soldiers died because of that insane order? That madness that the Ramban would have called Rahmanucho to shame the mercy of fools? I feel guilty about every Jewish soldier who was killed. It was all about this, but I'm not going to go to the I think could be about an eight-year-old child Rami Kaaba murdered by, by Arabs because we didn't throw out the Arabs. I feel guilty about Moshe Tamam, I feel guilty about Osana, I feel guilty about an entire list of Jews who were dead because of this Rahmanusha Tukshin, the mercy of fools. I feel guilty about that, yes. And believe me, I will do something about it. And finally, West Bank leadership, Palestinian leadership, let me say one thing to you. They are all PLO. They are all PLO. The PLO is not an organization. It's a concept. It's a concept. It's a concept that the Jews are thieves. And they've taken their land from the Palestinians. And now that land is Jaffa too. In any event, please God, I'm not a demagogue. My plan is not peace, and his plan is not peace. When the Messiah comes, there will be peace. Until then, survive, survive.